Let's our eyes up. Let's close our eyes for prayer. I will come here before you. We thank you for this workers' retreat. Thank you for the messages you've given us. Thank you for the way you've searched us and for the ways you've made us to see very clearly what you are requiring from us. Father, we pray that as we've had all these messages, we'll receive them with attitude of matured adult people in Jesus' name. That will not be people who are continually hearing, but not making any improvement in our lives. Father, we pray that you will lay your hand upon every one of us, so that what we ought to be, by your grace, will be in Jesus' name. As we come to the end of this workers' retreat, we pray that you speak more to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's be seated, please. This morning, before you go, we want to get you through the Bible and show you why leaders fail. It doesn't mean that everybody that listens to a message like this will succeed. Because it's what you do with what you hear that makes you succeed or makes you to fail. And you find that in the Lentness class again, some people still fail. Then you get to the higher class, and eventually there are those who fail. Some fail in the weekly tests that are given out. But they don't stop there, they fail in the, at the end of the semester. You don't stop there, they fail at the end of the session. Eventually they get to the top class and they still fail at the top class. Or some who appear to have been passing their exams at the lower classes eventually fail at the higher class. Then they go for external exam and those who have been succeeding internally in the school eventually fail the external exam. But then you follow students up to a higher level and you find that at the HSC or teacher training college or university, they fail. Some successfully get through university, so to say, and then in reading for their postgraduate, again they fail. As you look at the trend of failure, you must then begin to ask yourself, does failure stop at school? The truth of the matter is, failure is much more outside school than at school. And as you have heard what I've said now about failure in various stages of education, levels of education, that is just an indication as well as a parable to see that this is what happens to men in general. At the lower levels, younger age, children fail. But failure does not stop with children. When they become teenagers, they fail. In their 30s and 40s, you find a good percentage of people failing. Those who might apparently have been, even been succeeding before, then they get into their 50s and they have settled down in life. And now they fail every, in every important subject of their lives. Their marriages fail. Their businesses fail. In their lives, they fail. And as I told you that even when you think about postgraduate students, who you think now they've succeeded in every area of education, and now this is the last stage, in fact they have more time to themselves, they have to do some research and get some work done, eventually you find among these people those who fail. And there are those who have maybe graduated from the stage of young manhood, and now in the 60s perhaps, and people around them have thought that now these have succeeded in life just at the latter end of their lives before they leave this world they fail just as that postgraduate student before he leaves education uh, studying researching that he still fails if failure is like that and failure has not been actually well monitored and measured among human beings and because of that, the failure has been pronounced more and more in the lives of people. We have to be asking ourselves, why do people fail? Teachers have a lot to say as to why these uh, students fail. 
but they do not have a lot to say as to why they themselves fail. Now come to the professions that we have. You know that as we consider the professions that people have in the world, professional in the general sense, we teach, some of us uh, mechanics, some of us uh, engineers, some of us um, are managers and directors, some of us are involved in the work of God. But then as we consider the low form of work that people do, they, they too fail. Mechanics, tailors, you know, these, uh, the people that do some little, little works, they fail. Farmers fail. But it's unfortunate that preachers also, having the highest um, kind of work to do on the face of the earth, they fail. And the uh, percentage of failure among the preachers is very, very high. Higher than among the tailors, among the farmers, among the mechanics, among the engineers. That makes it very, very serious. So the question is, why do people fail in life? It's uh, almost a general thing. And, you know, when I was at school, I discovered that generally those students that are bad, they are bad all around. And sometimes you'll find a student that will say, well, in any case, uh, it doesn't actually matter. It's only arithmetic that I failed. You know that child uh, in primary school that says, it doesn't matter only arithmetic that I failed. You're watching when he gets to secondary school. He's going to fail algebra. He's going to fail geometry. He's going to fail trigonometry. He's going to fail everything related to mathematics. And uh, he's going to fail physics. He's going to fail chemistry. He's going to fail science subjects. Now, eventually, he's going to fail geography. Eventually, it's going to be a failure and a dropout. You know, people that are saying, well, actually, you know, it doesn't matter after all. It's only my marriage that is failing. But all the other things are succeeding. You watch him. It's going to fail in every area of life eventually. And uh, you've uh, found students uh, that will say, well, you know, it's only English that uh, I fail. I'm very, very good in all the other subjects. Watch him. He's not going to get any certificate out of life. Not only out of school, out of life. It's not going to get anything. So there are times that uh, you look at Christian workers and they will say, well, actually, I'm good at this, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. It's only in this area that I fail. But watch him. It's likely eventually to be a failure all through. And you want to find out why do these people fail in life? Well, the same reasons we failed at school. If you've done a real study on Christian workers, you read biographies. You might discover that what made a person fail when he was an unbeliever. It's unfortunate, but it's true. It's what is making the man fail now as a Christian. Saved, new creature. Now in what he has put his hand upon now, it's not succeeding. Check up his life. What made him fail in the primary school, secondary school? What made him fail in life before he became a Christian? And before he became a Christian worker, he might find that's what made him fail, making him fail in the Christian work. You know, take this little example. A woman has uh, married before he be she became a Christian. The marriage failed because of her tongue. You know, living in that home, talking with the husband, sharp, terrible, the way she talks, that's exactly why the marriage is failing. Don't stay there. Come back. Follow her back to the secondary school. She was dismissed from school in class 3. Why? Her tongue got her into problem and she openly abused the uh, history teacher. Don't stop there. Go back to primary school. You remember the headmaster wrote a note and said, I want to see the parents of uh, this child. Why? She was so shockingly rude, even to the headmaster primary school. Go still far back, when she was very, very young. And uh, you know this child, when she was very, very young, she didn't have uh, any permanent friend. She was always losing all the friends. Why? Her tongue caused her into a problem. Now come back from there, come back to Christianity. Now she's a Christian. Wonderful Christian. She's born again, she's saved, she's sanctified, and she's telling us she's baptized in the Holy Ghost. And listen to her when she prays, she speaks in tongues. But then the state leader is saying, I'm sorry, I cannot lay hand on this, this, and this that this person has done. But it's difficult to keep this person as a worker. What's the problem? Steal her tongue. And if she would 
sit down and think very, very well. This thing that is causing failure now in the Christian work is what has caused failure in her marriage. Perhaps her marriage has packed up. It's what caused failure in a, in a school. It's what caused failure in childhood. And uh, a person might find, for example, that when he was at school, very sharp, and every time the, what the teachers will write in the remarks or report will say, this person has the brain. If he can work hard, he will be a good student. The teacher is saying the problem is laziness. Then he gets to secondary school. And again, the teachers are going to comment and they would say, well, if the parents will tell this child to work more than play, he can be fantastic. He gets into uh, the universities and um, at the university, going for tutorial, one of the lecturers will call this person to the office and say, look, uh, looking at you, whenever you really pay attention in class and whenever you really seriously want to do something, you are marvelous. You can do something. But you know, uh, you need to, how do you spend your time? Because uh, at the university, you cannot beat them. You cannot, uh, you know what they are doing now. But if you beat them, there is trouble. Uh, so you cannot beat them. All you can do is to call them and say, how do you spend your time? Well, you, you are sharp. But uh, do you get to the library at all? Do you do this at all? That lecturer is saying, and haven't you discovered this laziness in your life? Eventually, he manages and he passes through. And he's now out of university. And he's got a job to do. And he has prospects for promotion, for success in life. And again, uh, the managers and the directors are writing in his file. They are saying, well, he's educated and he, ha he seems to have a good brain. It's only that uh, he'll give excuse whenever there is hard work to do. He's lazy. Think about this boy. Now he's a man. What is causing failure in his life? The same thing that caused the failure of primary school, secondary school, university, even though he tried to manage through, is what is causing fa failure in his uh, life now. And then is a married man now. But anything is to do in the family, he's always saying, can't we do that tomorrow? And if the wife is saying, uh, look, these children, they need this now, they need this now, he'll say, I know they're important, I know we'll do them, we'll do them, uh, at least. If we don't do that thing today, it doesn't mean that uh, the children uh, will go naked or something, we'll find time to do that, we'll do that. What's called saying the, the marriage to fail again, the thing that caused him from primary school, although he's now a Christian, Although he's now born again, and thank God he's born again, he's going to heaven, but he will not enjoy Christ or enjoy the Christian life down here. He'll not enjoy success, he'll not enjoy Christian work, he'll not enjoy anything. He might get to heaven just like he got to university. Almost missing the chance, they kept him on the waiting list. But eventually, thank God, he got to university. And you know, there are people that get to heaven like that, on the waiting list, but eventually, thank God, when the door was about to close, they okay, you come in. Failure. All through people's lives. You see, that's why we should be very, very careful. And a message like this that I want to give you this morning, why leaders fail, it's not a message you uh, throw over from your shoulders and throw to another person. You want to find out. Sit down. Check your life from the primary school, from when you were young, from before you were converted, what is it that has been causing this failure? Dissatisfaction in life. You've not been able to do what you wanted to do, what you could have done, but the failure has been following just this area, or this area, or this area. So all that we say now can be applied to almost anybody, but it's only that we're concentrating on Christian workers. And if there is any failure, perhaps in your marriage, you can think about all these things that I'm going to give you this morning. Very brief, but yet telling you this is why people fail in their lives. And I believe that if you really meditate on what you are going to hear, and you get to the Lord on your knees and say, Lord, I have a single life to live. This single life, I will succeed. And I have found people who have failed up to maybe secondary school, secondary three or secondary four. And uh, maybe one of the teachers called them and they sat them down and they said, look, you are not good for anything. And they talked to them very straight. And after talking to them like that, they cried. But then they went to the hostel, to the dormitory, and they meditated and said, why am I crying? 
what this teacher is saying is true. But why is it true? I know the reason it is true is because of this, this, and this. I am going to change. All the things that this teacher said, that I will never make it, I'll never do this, I'm going to prove it's wrong. All of a sudden, this student were cut off, going to the field for football, wasting time, doing this, doing that, and just comes around, and he, be he becomes very serious. Within three months, there is a change. Within six months, there is a change. I know it because it happened to me. When I was in the primary school, I started since 1948. I've been in school. I didn't get to, you know, they said, uh, you'll be in class one, go to class two. When I finish class one, they put me in class one A. <laughs> I think I, I started 47. And that time your hands have to reach your ear like this. Then they eventually pushed me to class two. And my father will beat me at home for, uh, just to study. The teacher will beat me at school to study. But it wasn't, uh, I was wondering why, why all this trouble? Why are, they, why are they tormenting me like this, harassing my life? <laughs> they put me in class two, uh, 1949. That's, you, that time, they, were, they have not allowed me to go to standard one, but just to be doing preliminary for primary. So eventually they put me in class two. Then again, when the others went on, I went to class two B. <laughs> and then I got to standard one. Then standard two. And if, even when we were taking, because those days we had to take exam in standard two to go to standard three in another, in another village. But even near the exam like this, what was I doing? I was playing and sleeping because we went, for, we went in another place to go and have that examination. And eventually, uh, when we took uh, the exam, I think 52, I said, well, I pass because, you know, I wasn't very sure. And I remember what they asked uh, those days, 1952. 